There Hi, she everyone. is. Hi. Oh, you're in the restaurant, of course. I am literally in the storage closet today. So <laughs> are you ever, out. are you ever not working? No, <laughs> I am always, always working. Um, um, well, yeah, thank you really so much for joining us. I was just telling everybody online because everybody by now I was saying knows Derek. Um, oh, so, so you're, you know, I was saying you've been my sister, you know, since I was 16 years old and I know how busy you are. Um, and so I'm so excited to talk to you and share your story with everyone. Um, we're celebrating nudes. We're both in our yep. nude sweats. <laughs> um, so anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. This is so exciting. I know a lot of people are really interested in actually learning, you know, how do you start a business? So um, a little more for everyone. Uh, Basilica and I go back a really long time, since even before Derek. And um, we, we, we started a, a charity together when she was 13 and I was 16. And we raised a bunch of money for the children's hospital. We threw this huge party and the red hot chili peppers came. Like, I still don't know how we pulled that off. You know what? All about it now, even uh, Dimitri, for those of you who don't know, he's my boyfriend. He, when we first started, like, you didn't do that. And I'm like, no, we really did that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to your question about how do you start a business, I think that's what it is. You know, the number one thing I would tell everyone is you kind of have to have that childhood fearlessness, you know, and at 13 yeah. years old, I'm going to start a foundation and I'm going to throw a fundraiser and I'm going to get a bunch of celebrities to participate. Being 27 and saying that out loud, you kind of just want to, like, uh huh, and good luck with that. But I think it's that naivete, that passion and that love for what you do. If you carry it in anything at any age, you can do it. That's so true. I feel like we get kind of jaded when we grow up by the real world and it's kind of scary. And when we were kids, we were just like, yeah, let's just do it. But it's you, so true. That's what it is as a child. You don't know heartbreak. You don't know failure. You don't know hatred, right? All of those things are learned and taught by society. But when you're a child, you really just have joy and love. I mean, the things that we would stress out about at 13, like, oh my God, yeah. I algebra test and it's the end of my life like what I would do right now to voluntarily take that <laughs> test. Um, no totally and it's a yeah. challenge to kind of hold on to that childhood innocence uh it's something just believe in yourself the idea of not doing the things you want to do just doesn't sound mm -hmm. plausible you know, if I were to ask my six or seven year old cousins what do you want to be and someone said astronaut I would say go do that and then at some point at 15 or 16, your parents say like, well, you know, are you smart enough to be an astronaut? Do you know how much math you're going to need to do? Like, you're going to have to leave the earth for two years. And suddenly everything seems so scary and everything seems so daunting. And yes, it's not always that easy, but if you can hold on to that belief in yourself and just this idea that, yeah, I can do that. And if I like, like we tell our children, try it. And if you fall, you get a boo-boo, you get back up. I think that's kind of the number one rule to starting a business is you just tell yourself some days are good, some days are bad. The worst thing that happens is I fall, I get my boo-boo, and I keep going on. And if you keep totally. that, I don't think there's anything anyone can't do. That's such a great attitude. And, you know, it's actually not surprising coming from you because you come from – long line of incredibly ambitious, entrepreneurial, driven, <laughs> driven women, exactly, who, um, you know, they, they started the business not out of passion, though, out of necessity, right? And, I, and um, we're celebrating Women's History Month, and you guys are the quintessential, you know, multi-generational women-run business. And so I wanted you to share a little bit about your family story with everyone. Um. Well, I come from what Natalia said is a long line of strong men and women. Um, yes, I think the women for the people who know my family story are always celebrated. Um, but I do want to take a minute to talk about the men in my family. You know, I was never told that I was supposed to get married and be a homemaker. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But and, and those are all goals I have, and I think so many other women share. 
but my I never saw my father tell my mom like you should be home or you can't do this or honey that's too heavy for you or um, you know why do you dress like that why do you look like that my entire life it was look at your mom like I want you to grow up and be better than your mom I want to see what you're gonna do with your life so the idea that I would ever not found a business or not be a fortune 500 CEO or not be a race car driver or whatever it is um, that we tell our kids they can and cannot do just wasn't a thing in my family. Um, you know, my grandma immigrated here in 1975 with my mom who was seven at the time um, and her two sisters, my, no, sorry, my mom was five, her older sister was seven and her younger sister Monique was three. And Saigon had fallen. They were part of the, um, Arist aristocracy, sorry, in <laughs> Vietnam, and uh, they left behind a life of extreme privilege. And when they came here, they came as refugees. They went through the proper system, lived in a refugee camp um, for quite some time, and were finally able to settle in San Francisco. And in 1971, a few years before the war, my great grandma Diana um, purchased a small deli one bedroom apartment. And so all together, they lived on the floor with no furniture in this one bedroom apartment. Uh, no one spoke English. No one really wanted to be in America. For them, Vietnam was home and coming here wasn't, you know, it wasn't our American dream. They had no desire to be part of the American dream. This was like you completely out of necessity and, and to seek asylum. Um, but one year, credit to my grandma she learned English fluently got her CPA was an accountant in the day and ran the deli at night all while being a mother um, <laughs> even saying that out loud it's, it's like <laughs> I don't know how that yeah, um, I can't but, um, I'm getting teary-eyed I always do <laughs> and we are so close you know the idea that everyone comes together when things are good or bad we're always one unit and I was always raised that way. And so my mom out of duty and love for her mother to try to make her mom's lives better um, as a teenager started working in restaurants. And then she actually took the deli at about 14, which sounds crazy, renovated it, made it into a 60 seat restaurant and helped her mom run it. You know, this was when children could be at the cash register. <laughs> you don't really see that today. Yeah. And then yeah. she grew it. So she took 10 long and then she did, created Crustacean San Francisco and then she created Crustacean Beverly Hills. And that's really when my family became uh, the on family or an LA institution, I think was when Crustacean Beverly Hills started. But like you said, it was out of necessity and it really wasn't out of passion, but it was a, a grandma and a mom um, both moms at the time providing for their children. My mom was a single mom and, sh and she did it for her mom, but also for me and my sister and my brother. Um, and, you know, to some point with nudes, this is me for my mom. It's been a really tough year for restaurants. Um, watching, oh, I will cry. Um, yeah. <laughs> everything my parents built, everything my mom built, everything my grandma built come so close to being gone after 25 and 47 years in the business because of rules that, you know, may or may not have made sense is incredibly tough and incredibly painful to look at our employees who lost their jobs. Um, everyone, and not just crustacean, but everyone in the restaurant industry has been decimated by COVID. And during all of this, I said, like, what can I do to help? You know, I can't bring any more customers to the restaurant. I can't market it any better. You, you literally could not go to the restaurant. Um, and I just said, oh, my God, when this pandemic is over, I really, truly, and when we've had these conversations at home, don't know if we're going to be here. And so just like my mom did for her mom, I did this for my mom. And I think that we talked about passion and fearlessness in my family that passion is each other that's providing for and loving each other and this is i guess this is it's my turn but this is my way 
of telling my mom how much I love her and telling mm. my friends how much I respect her. Uh, being able to do it with some of my best friends to make, you know, kind of truly to turn lemon into lemonade and <laughs> take something that's really painful and try to make it something that's fun and enjoyable and beloved by so many people has been such a blessing. Uh, I, I really am so thankful. And I think that because it came from this place of true heart and at the same time wanting to spread joy to everyone when things were so challenging, nudes has become a success so early on because I think everyone kind of needed that bit of joy in their lives. Absolutely. It's a oh gosh, you made me cry now. But um, it it is, it's, it's fun, it's young, it's, it's actually so exciting to to witness i mean i wasn't neither of us were around in the early days of 10 long but hearing the stories kind of you guys have the reason why i think you've been around for so long is because you've always adapted and moved with the times and so when you know when when your family first came from vietnam and they didn't know how to cook italian food i love the story your grandma's like well i know that they like pasta so i'm gonna make a kind of pasta that i know how to make and that became the garlic noodles which are now famous and um, then, you know, Crustacean, San Francisco, and then Beverly Hills, it was like kind of the next step. And now here comes nudes, which is just so fun. If you guys haven't seen them, you, you should check out their Instagram. If you're in LA, you can order them. If you're not, hopefully they'll come to you soon. Um, but they're, they're literally us. It's like millennials, Netflix and chill, order your <laughs> nudes. It's, it's just, it's so much fun. So I guess tell us you out of all the people I know you're probably the most brilliant kind of like creative marketing person oh I know amongst all the other things that you do like you really really shine in that oh, department um, tell us a little bit about the concept and kind of how it came to life I think nudes for me was I'm 27 I'm stuck at home I can't see my friends um, everything feels incredibly expensive right now and how do I share what I love with everyone else? And how do I give everybody some joy um, and kind of celebrate this moment, if you will? And I was like, honestly, as much as I, I want to say that I was the person that was going to be out on the town and love going out, I was always that person that loved to stay. <laughs> I think most of the generation did. And I said, I mean, like, you know, crew necks and Speakers. I just said, let's just make a brand that honestly celebrates everything we as a generation are. We love our phones. We love our pictures. Uh, we love really good to go food, but we want to know how to eat it. And that's why there's reheating instructions there. We want high quality ingredients. We want organic. Uh, we want everything premium at affordable prices. And then I took kind of vegan you know, options <laughs> exactly all those business things like i need to have the vegan i need to make it affordable i need to make it instagram friendly i you know i need to make it reheat friendly i need to make sure everything can go into a microwave because millennials such as myself really don't want to order to go and then turn on the stove or, or turn on the oven and then from there i said okay here are all the functions if you will but as a brand like what do i want nudes to be and I just said right now more than anything we all need some sunshine we all need some happiness we need to be able to eat outside because lord knows I can only eat one more meal in my mm -hmm. store um and th that's really what it it became so then I got my friends involved I've had some amazing amazing friends who are now my partners at nudes kind of I gave the storyboard with me and we felt that we settled on a brand that really represented who we were as a generation and this moment, but that kind of universal love, universal happiness. And, and we picked the colors really deliberately. I wanted when you get that box for you to see that yellow, for you to see that happiness and for it to say like, I might be stuck on my couch, everything might feel really difficult, but right now I've got my box of nudes and I can live with that and I'm really happy with that. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think, I, I think you executed it beautifully it's it's just it really is it's a breath of fresh air and it's delicious and so we can finally get our nudes to go um what was what was yeah. the hardest part what was the biggest challenge i guess that you faced oh i mean so there's so many but what what stands out 
Well, let's start with the obvious. It was COVID. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you get a team together without getting the team together? Um, we became really Zoom proficient. How do you do menu tastings and food tastings in a COVID safe way? Um, how do you get product made when you can't touch and feel the paper? So we had a lot of plans being sent back and forth with post-it notes of move this and one millimeter to the left and one millimeter to the right. Um, we worked in different time zones. God, logistics was a challenge. I think anyone oh, yeah. tried to mail anything or bought anything online right now during COVID has definitely had some issues, even with their Amazon Prime. Um, I think any entrepreneur, any founder will tell you I can't tell you one day where there wasn't a problem. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Laughing at this, what went wrong. Everything. Everything yeah. went wrong from start to finish. But that's, you know, when in that moment you're like, oh God, and here we go again. But sometimes you just need to laugh it off and say things are meant to be. And the challenges are part of the journey, as cliche as that sounds. But especially with nudes, given everything that we were going through, we kind of just said, F it. It's going to be another COVID day and it's going to go as bad as it's going to go, not as well as it's going to go. And so kind of every day, no matter how tough, we already went into it with, it's going to be a struggle. So we ended up having a lot of fun in the process. I think so many people start a business and just have their business plan and have that roadmap and say on this day, this is going to happen. And if you go into it like that, it's, you know, it's going to take all the fun out of it. So we kind of flipped it on its head and basically said, we're expecting to start here. Oh, we ended up here. That was a great day. Right. So attitude is key. It key. sounds like attitude <laughs> and flexibility, a little improvisation. Absolutely. Um, but, but yeah, attitude. Um, I had, uh, I asked people for questions yesterday. A lot of people sent in some questions. I wanted to ask you some of some of theirs specifically. So I know we talked about the challenges of launching a company during COVID, which is just <laughs> insane. Um, but just generally speaking, as a founder, um, if you like, what kind of advice? I guess yeah. I guess these questions are more generally speaking. So um, the first one is when you have an idea, how do you actually get the process going? So how do you go from idea to actual like product start <laughs> I said and it sounds so silly and it sounds so simple but my answer is start put that idea to paper start with if I was to start this today what are 10 things I need to do start building out that list and then go into the nitty-gritty of okay let me google that business plan template let me look up those words you know, let me do my SWOT analysis and analyze things. Let me do my financials before you bog yourself down in all of the, you know, let's call it businessy is the, the tough part, the formal part. Look at the core of your business and understand that this is your business. Other people may not understand it for a long time. When I first started my family, they're in fine dining and they thought, well, how, what do you mean we're going to do our food in a box yeah you know, never go so that for them was kind of like you know in one ear out the other I adore my grandmother and she's probably the wisest person you'll ever meet but she was 77 so when I said yeah grandma we're gonna put food in a box and people are gonna order it it's just something that they don't understand gener generationally but now she's the person I go to for advice every single day because when it comes to business and work ethic and foundation and strategy and, and kitchen operations, you will never meet a brighter person. So when I start, it's because right now the idea lives up here and it's never been produced out here. So if you try to communicate that with someone, they're just not going to get it yet. But it's on you to come up with a way that they're going to be able to see and to understand that. So Put that idea to paper and say, hey, step one, step two, step three, here are all of my ideas, and then go into the formal part. Don't start with all of those fancy things that are going to overwhelm you, or by the time you pull that template out, you're going to feel like it's too daunting, and you're going to stop yourself when you have all of the tools to be successful. That's really great advice. 
Yeah, I, sometimes just the pitch itself, like actually articulating it in a few sentences is the hardest part. Completely. Even for me now, when nudes is open and people ask me to explain it, I take a minute to pause. Because as a founder, there's so much to your brand that you see that other people don't see, or you build such an attachment to it that yeah. other people don't understand it. But, you know, every founder drives their business because it comes from in here and it comes from in here and you're always five steps ahead. So if you can believe in yourself to say, hey, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Chances are you will do it. And it sounds so cliche, but every time I watch, you know, founder videos from the people that I love the most, like Sarah Blakely, who is without question my idol, they all say the same thing. So I'm going to say that to you. Start. I love that. And that actually answered so many questions in that little speech. Oh. You covered so many things, but it, it is really helpful. And I think it's just, it's just that first step that can seem so daunting, but just, just go for it. Um, but on the flip side of that, especially for entrepreneurs, um, you know, your dad, speaking of men, is one of them always starting a new project, All right? Always trying something new, which is some, every it, <laughs> it's, somewhere in his brain. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, the the industries that he's worked in, it's just, it's like his resume is ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Um, but, you know, so entrepreneurs know better than anyone that you have a lot of successes and you have, you know, sometimes an equal, if not more amount of failures. So, um, failures and success. Yeah. Yeah. You have, and, and that's kind of just part of it. So when this is, um, someone wanted to know, and this is, I thought it was a very interesting question, like when, or how do you know that it's time to move on? So the first thing I'm going to say is even at our team meetings at nudes, we celebrate every failure. There is no such thing as failing in entrepreneurship. You're just stumbling, and that is without question part of the process. There have been so many times that I wanted to do something for nudes or any of my other businesses, and it didn't work out that way, and I liked the alternative. So I would always say keep an open mind when it comes to your business. And the second part is when is it time to move on? I would reframe the question to ask yourself, when is it time to pivot? Mm. There's so many apps, businesses, and stories that we can think of where founders started here, zigzagged their business, and ended up totally over there. Um, I think that that's what's most important is maybe you had a vision. Maybe you said, oh, this is going to be my product, and yet the marketplace loves it and wants to use it in a different way listen to them because they're your consumer base, right? They want to be behind you. I like to believe in people. And I like to think that if you can give them something that they can own and be a part of, they're going to help you be successful. So when they maybe change what you thought you were going to start with in a direction, go that way. Um, when is it time to truly call it quits? I would say when your business doesn't solve a consumer pain, it's mm. not one that should have been started in the first place. And when the product you're putting out there doesn't mm. have the true integrity you intended for it to, to really add to the community. I'm someone who really believes, especially with our generation and social entrepreneurship at Nudes, knowing that it was going to be something that was going to be on social media platforms and for millennials, we created the hashtag nudist or hashtag nudes challenge where we donate a meal, um, four meals actually for every box purchased to the LA food bank. And that was something that was really important to me, not just to put out another food product, but to do something with it and to activate our community in that way. Uh, so I would ask every founder, every entrepreneur to think the same. Is my product helping people in one way or another? And if it's not, and the market isn't responding to it, chances are you haven't hit that big idea yet, but you were on your way. That's, that's really great advice. And, and such an, such a more powerful way to frame it. And to, you know, you have to in a way kind of release your baby, you know, you can't, you have to share it. And I think that's such a beautiful way to look at everything. Um, and speaking of community, I know you're super busy. Um, and 
you're gonna have to run soon. But there was one last important thing that I wanted to bring up. And I think this is a perfect segue. Um, you know, hate crimes against the Asian community have been on the rise yet uh, lately. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, a devastating thing to watch. President Biden spoke about it recently. And I wanted to know, you know, your experience being um, an Asian American founder and just like in your broader community at large, like have you experienced any sort of discrimination in your past or what, um, and also what can we do to support, um, you know, our, the, our Asian friends? <laughs> Uh, thank you for asking that question. It's, I think, something that isn't talked about as much as it should be. Yes, there is a significant amount of discrimination and hate towards Asians right now, particularly because of China virus and, and rhetoric that was used. Um, I would say in general, in the last few years, hate as a whole has been on a rise. So... I don't want this to be necessarily just about the Asian American community, which absolutely could use your support. I think I would say as, as a human being, you know, it's again, that golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. There are so many stereotypes we can slap on anyone, but I think in general, crime is up, uh, in general, hate is up. And it's on each and every one of us to spread that love and to spread that joy and to remember like, this is my neighbor, you know, this is the yeah. person that I grew up with or a person I don't know, but probably needs some help right now. Everyone is struggling. I think this pandemic has taken a toll on everyone in every which way, whether it's your health, uh, your finances, your career, your weight, um, your mental, yeah. I mean, you name it, it has affected someone in one way or another. And let's just be more understanding and more compassionate of each other. You know, maybe your friend blows up at you one day. You know she doesn't mean it. It's coming from a place of hurt and fear and stress. Maybe your neighbor seems erratic one morning. Instead of being mean to her, just say, hey, can I help you? And I think that in general, if we all did those things for one another, this world would be a far more enjoyable place to be. Um, and that's all I'll say on that issue. Yeah. Um... Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And to everyone, you know, I hope that we can all live up to the ideals that that we preach and be the, you know, the people that that, you know, we really hope to be. It's not that hard to just treat each other with kindness and love. <laughs> and um, I want to thank you so oh, much for spending you. time with me and sharing your wisdom with everyone. I know everyone's so grateful. Also, I've seen so many comments, people saying that they love our sweaters and where can they get them? So follow at nudes to go. You can get all your info there. And if you're in LA, definitely I'll try them. Today for this Thursday through Saturday um, and Sunday as well. So go ahead and, and book your boxes. Um, you never know what surprises I might throw in. I know. Oh, yes. It's St. Patrick's Day coming up. So we have some lucky boxes going out. Don't. That's it's what I heard. Secret stuff going on uh, this week. So the nudes page will be one to watch all week long. I'll just say that. Okay. Great to know. And also, you know, every box will, there will be four boxes donated to help people in need. So that's just awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. And um, thank you for talking with all of us. Thank I love you. you. I'll see you later, I'm sure. For all your time, um, hashtag nudist. And it was so nice to meet everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for Bye. joining. I'll be posting this so you can rewatch.